As men, testosterone, the highest level of testosterone you have is in the heart, then the brain, then the reproductive system. You have to also realize that if you were exposed to high levels of estrogen, you are going to have low testosterone in the system. This is why I do not encourage any soy or pea protein products or hemp seed protein products because of the estrogenic effects that these things can cause. So leave them alone. If you want to eat protein, eat eggs. Highest biological value of any protein food you're going to eat is eggs. Okay, next is a dairy product, whether it be yogurt, cottage cheese, fermented dairy, or unpasteurized milk. If you have the capacity to access unpasteurized milk, I would tell you to mix that with eggs, a little bit of iodine and honey, and drink that every day as a protein shake. You will not find anything better on the market anywhere. I used that stuff without even training, and I got huge on it, muscle-wise. I wasn't fat or any kind of thing. It was all dense muscle. Muscle memory is what it was filling. So I'd encourage you to use this if you're going to use a protein source. Eat your meat, eat your chicken, eat your eggs, eat your duck, eat your goose, eat um, uh, cottage cheese, maslanka, ricotta cheese, you know, Havarti cheese. These are protein, these are fermented dairy products that create a bacterial health in the colon. It's going to give you your fat for your testosterone production. You need that cholesterol to build up. Some of you say, well, cholesterol will kill you. It never will kill you. That has been the biggest pile of rubbish that ever came out of the medical industry. What will kill you is periodized fat that is exposed to sugar. And your grains are the biggest culprit. Why do you think they reversed the food a pyramid? Grains were at the bottom of the food pyramid. Now they're at the top, which means a lot of you are going to have diabetes, uh, uh, com compromised colon, whether it be enteritis or irritable bowel syndrome, colon. You eat that high grain diet and you are definitely going to break down. So go back to the basics. Fat is where it's at. Protein is where it's at. Fruits and vegetables are where it's at. Nuts and seeds, again, are further down because of the phytate content and the fiber in these, in these things. They can cause a law of diminishing returns. The more these seeds you eat, the less you get out of them because they can congest the colon and deplete the body of minerals. So using them sparingly is okay. Sprouts, sprouted vegetables, knock yourself out. Fermented vegetables, knock yourself out. These are things that you want to use. The only fruits I don't encourage are bananas, grapes, Raisins, watermelons, and dates. And the reason why I don't encourage them because one, they're high glycemic sugar foods. Two, so many of you have got so much clutter down here with the grains that you've consumed and the soy you've consumed and now this cheap pea protein that they're promoting that you are congested down here and any sugar you consume is going to activate a yeast, a fungus, or a bacteria in the lower GI. So you don't want to use a high glycemic sugar until you clean that out. Once you eliminate the grains, once you eliminate the cereals, once you eliminate the bread for a period of time, you may find that all of a sudden you're feeling better. Yes, you're going to feel like crap because you're, with, you're hooked on these foods. Especially about the third day. The moment you get off all grains in your diet, the third day you're climbing the wall because of the addictive nature. And the sugar produces high levels of insulin, which lowers your testosterone. The heart says, oh, what's going on here? And the brain says, wait a minute, what's happening here? And then south of the border is saying, hey, we're not moving. <laughs> Ain't happening. Insulin's too high. There's no tea left to fuel the tank. There are some products that are supposed to boost the T levels or the erectile levels. And then they've got aluminum lake red, aluminum lake blue, aluminum lake green. This is aluminum. This is aluminum. So why is that in health supplements? Titanium dioxide, which is equivalent to asbestos, why is that in a supplement? Okay, these are, this is the reason why I'm showing you these things because, quite frankly, the pharmaceutical industry, this is what they would put in their drugs. So if you put add one plus one, you might 
correlate that the drug companies are manufacturing these supplements and adding these contaminants. Now, I for one go to a health food store because I want to retain my health. I do not want to go to a health food store and buy, especially you bodybuilders, so pay attention to me here. You're buying bodybuilding supplements that has a sassafrain potassium in it, which causes thymus cancer. You're buying stuff with aspartame in it, which causes about 144 different problems. You're buying sucralose that causes all kinds of neuro neurodegenerative issues along the spine and, and kidney damage. And this is in your proteins, and they're going to tell you that the body will flush this out because the protein will carry it out. The protein will chelate these chemicals more effectively into the cells and tissue. Get your proteins plain. Plain or with vanilla or cocoa, nothing else. I, there's one protein that we were that I showed. It's a beef protein or an egg protein. They have the higher bio BB rating anyway. A lot of your whey proteins, you'll very, be very hard pressed to find a whey protein that doesn't have soy lecithin or some other crap product in it. If you can find a whey product that doesn't have anything in it, I, then by all means use it. I would rather encourage you to go get unpasteurized milk. You know, you go to a cow, you give it a tug, milk comes out, you drink that, or sheep or a goat. <clears throat> That's the best thing, seriously. You got the fat, you got the antioxidants, you got the probiotic, you got the enzymes, you got the minerals. What more could you ask for? All in one. Okay? You look at the guys 90 years ago, lived on the farm. Average lifespan was 92.2 years. What did they have? Fat, butter, unpasteurized milk. They ate the fats and the proteins, meat. Nobody died from eating meat until we genetically engineered the grains that were feeding these cows. Nobody died from eating a cholesterol until we altered the sugars and the fats that we're consuming today. People ate saturated fats and never had a problem until we added margarine to the equation, until we added aspartame to the equation, until we added microwaves to the equation, or until we added synthetic colors to the equation, or until we start hybriding grains, mixing this grain with this grain. That's when we had the problems. You could eat wheat. We're talking about, I was doing a show today, and we're talking about gluten. Gluten has never been the problem. Gluten has never been the problem with wheat. The problem with wheat is it's been genetically altered. That's the problem with wheat. You have high levels of glutamates in wheat that causes all kinds of brain issues and disruptive issues along the body. Eating genetically modified wheat is like eating MSG. It has the same effect. Wheat never had a problem until it was cross-hybrided or, or contaminated with genetics. That's the problem with wheat. Okay. When they bleached wheat with chl chlorinated uh, chemicals, that's when it became a problem. When they started hybriding the wheat, it became a problem. When they genetically altered the wheat, it became a disaster. Okay. That's the problem with wheat. Wheat in and of itself is not a bad thing. But not we're not eating wheat today. What we're eating today is far from wheat. Far from rye. We're not eating rye anymore. We're not eating oats anymore. We're not eating sorghum anymore. We're not eating corn anymore. We're not even eating, and again, we shouldn't be eating soy anyway. We're not eating rice anymore. What we're eating is a facsimile of those foods that we ate yesteryear. What we're eating today is a genetic abomination. Is what we're eating today. And on top of that, we're having chemtrails falling down on these genetically modified grains which bind with the polymers because of the interaction of the genetics you consume them and then you wind up with lesions and issues and all kinds of wonderful things we want to encourage you to use to minimize exposure to estrogen if you're a male okay no soy no pea protein these are garbage proteins hemp protein these are not the greatest proteins to be using They've been marketed as some kind of super duper pooper food, but they really don't have, they don't live up to the hype. They just don't. 
You need fat. You need saturated fat. Saturated fat converts to cholesterol. Cholesterol converts to pregnenolone. Pregnenolone converts to DHEA. DHEA converts to uh, progesterone for the men. From progesterone produces androstenedione. Androstenedione produces testosterone. Then from testosterone produces DHT. And then from DHT produces estrogen you will convert to estrogen. So the thing you want to use are things that are going to block estrogen or convert the estrogens out of the body, like iodine, parsley, peppermint, rosemary, sage, thyme, savory. These either bind with estrogen or take the estrogens out of the system. Turmeric, hawthorn berry, red wine. These things take estrogens out. Uh, onion, garlic, take estrogens out. You may not want to increase the testosterone, you may want to sustain what you have, but what you want to do is remove the excess estrogens out of the body. That's what you should be looking at. Producing more testosterone means you're just going to produce more estrogen. So if you can sustain your testosterone or elevate it slightly and sustain that and block the estrogens or get them out of the body, that would be further to your advantage. Leave the grains alone. Grains are highly estrogenic. They have xenoestrogens in your in them that do not work with your body.